That morning in a school in Mexico, some students lined up before entering their class. Meanwhile, in the staff's office before class started, the principal distributed cakes to the teachers to celebrate the new semester. At that moment, the principal said that their school's average score percentage in the last final exam ended at the very bottom in the whole country. Not only that, more than half of their sixth grade students dropped out of school last year. He wanted that the students should be able to achieve better this year. After that, when the principal wanted to introduce a new teacher, he was confused as to why the new teacher wasn't there. Meanwhile, when the students were about to enter the class, they were shocked to see the tables overturned and chairs piled up in the corner of the classroom. Inside, it turned out that the new teacher was waiting for them. His name was Sergio. He immediately ordered all the students to jump onto the overturned table and thought of it as a ship. To see the strange behavior of the new teacher, the students were stunned. When the principal went around checking the condition of the classes, he was shocked to see Sergio's class so messy, and the students were playing with overturned tables. He entered the class and about to complain, Sergio immediately ordered his students to save the principal and took him to the ship so he wouldn't drown but because the principal was fat, the students said that their ship would end up sinking. Hearing that, Sergio then asked what could make a ship float and how to calculate the weight that the ship could hold. The students were silent and didn't know and apparently, Sergio didn't know either. Because no one knew, Sergio invited them to go to the computer room to look for answers on the internet. Unfortunately, the principal said that they couldn't use the computer room. Luckily, Sergio didn't run out of ideas. He invited all the students to come to the library. When they arrived at the library, there were very few books there. Moreover, they were all old books. Sergio refused to give up on finding the answers. He then asked how an object could float and told his students to speak up. No matter whether right or wrong, he wouldn't be mad at them. He told them that there was no truth without mistakes. Hearing that, one of the students said that all this time they were afraid of answering wrongly because if they kept getting it wrong, their grades would be bad and they might not pass the exam. Sergio promised that he would give them all perfect scores but still the students remained silent and afraid of answering incorrectly. They were still traumatized by getting a bad grade. After school, the principal heard a noise from outside and when he checked, he saw Sergio pushing a table out of the classroom. Sergio told him that he didn't need the table in his class. Confused by Sergio's strange behavior, the principal reprimanded and said that if he wanted a playground as a classroom, he could just teach in the yard. Hearing the nagging just now instead of stopping, Sergio actually decided to do so. He also asked about the computer room. Inside, it turned out that the room was empty. The principal said that four years ago, this room actually had a computer, but just after two months, the room was broken into and all the computer was stolen by someone. The only computer left was the one in his office. Even though the first day of school didn't go as expected, Sergio managed to arouse interest in learning from one of the students named Paloma. In fact, Paloma was a very smart student. Even though she lived in poverty and her father was a scavenger, she was still enthusiastic about school. She often collected books that she found when helping her father scavenging. Unfortunately, her father didn't support her. Her father considered school nothing more than a waste of time. Elsewhere, Sergio's student Nico was seen playing at the gang headquarters because his brother was a member of the gang. He often hung out and was even close to the gang leader. Every time he went there, the gang leader always offered him to join, but his brother forbade him because he loved him and didn't want his little brother to become a criminal like him. The next day during class, Sergio told a story about a donkey. One day a donkey fell into a very deep empty well. Seeing the donkey suffering, the farmer felt sorry for it and decided to bury the well along with his donkey to end its suffering. But when the ground almost filled the well, the farmer was shocked to see his donkey jump out of the well. It turned out that the donkey had stepped on the ground that was put in to reach the top. Sergio then said that he wanted the students in his class to be like the donkeys in life, to step on trials and obstacles as a stepping stone to achieve their dreams. Sergio said that he wouldn't decide what he wanted to teach and would teach what the students wanted to learn, but because no one said what they wanted to study, Sergio sat back and read a newspaper until finally, a student raised his hand and said if he was still curious about how the ship could float. Sergio then asked why balloons floated in the water while bowling balls of the same size would sink. After asking that, he excused himself for a moment while telling the students to look for the answers themselves. When he returned, Sergio asked what answers they got. One of the students answered that the object's size matters. Another one said the weight matters. Sergio was happy to hear that as both of them were correct. Weight and size were the concepts of density. He then began to explain about it on the blackboard. They then tried the theory in the yard. The principal saw them and came to complain, but Sergio immediately taught the children how to measure the density of abstract objects like humans by comparing their bodies and the principal's body. Not long after, class ended. When everyone left, Paloma asked if Sergio thought that one day she could be an astronaut. 
Hearing his students' dreams, Sergio encouraged her and was sure that if she tried hard, Paloma would be able to achieve her dreams. Paloma was happy to hear that. Somewhere else, Nico met his brother who just returned home. His brother was confused to see him fixing a damaged ship. Nico said that he had learned a lot about ships at school, so he wanted to see his damaged ship able to float in the ocean like before. He also said that if it was possible, he wanted to focus on school and didn't want to deal with his older brother's gang. When he heard his younger brother's words, his brother just remained silent. At the office, one of the teachers came to meet the principal and said that he didn't like Sergio's strange way of teaching and told the principal to reprimand him. So after work, the principal went to Sergio's house. Sergio explained that his learning method was strange because he wanted the children to be enthusiastic about studying. At his previous school, the number of students became smaller and smaller each year until finally, last year, there was not a single child who went to school. So when he moved to this new school, he didn't want to lose his students anymore. The principal was moved to hear that. He then allowed Sergio to teach his way because, after getting permission, he asked the principal to help him teach the students. Months passed. One morning, Sergio just entered class when he saw Nico sitting there alone. When he was asked why he came so early in the morning, Nico shyly asked how to get a girl to like him. Calmly, Sergio told him to make the girl feel special. He then showed him a school scholarship brochure majoring in astronomy and told him to give the brochure to Paloma because Paloma loved astronomy. Nico was confused there as to why Sergio knew who the girl he liked was, but when Sergio wanted to put the brochure in Nico's bag, Nico immediately took his bag and hugged it tightly as if he didn't want Sergio to see what was inside. That was when Sergio realized that there must be something illegal in his bag, but he didn't want to force him to show it to him. He believed his students were smart enough to determine what was good and bad. After school, Sergio went to the principal's office and reported about one of the students who brought something illegal to school, but when asked what the student's name was, Sergio didn't want to tell. He just wanted to confide in him and believe that his students would be able to solve their own problems. But he also felt sorry, because his students were just kids. Hearing Sergio's story, the principal said that if he didn't want to report, why did he come in the first place? On the other hand, when Nico and Paloma walked home, Nico showed her the brochure from Sergio, while encouraging that Paloma would definitely be able to achieve her dream. Hearing Nico, who cared so much about her, Paloma asked him to stop by her house. She wanted to show something to him. When they arrived, Paloma took her telescope and then took Nico to the top of the trash mountain to see the rocket launch field not far from there. Paloma told him about the world's biggest rocket that would soon be launched there. He asked Nico to promise to accompany her to watch the rocket launch together. The next day, the principal met Sergio and told him that there would be a delegation from the government coming to the school to show the students how to use a computer. Hearing the news, Sergio was happy that the school would finally have a computer, but when all the students gathered to wait for their new computer, they found out that they didn't have a new computer. The government delegation only explained how computers work via drawing board. Sergio left the place in disappointment. After school, Paloma's father was seen waiting for Sergio in front of the school. He was angry with Sergio for giving a scholarship brochure to his daughter. He said that poor families like them should be more diligent in earning money instead of being busy wasting time at school. Even though Sergio had tried to convince him that Paloma was a smart student, the man ignored it and didn't want his daughter to expect too high. He was worried that his daughter would be disappointed when she faced the reality. Hearing that, Sergio was just silent. The next day, the principal met with Sergio, who was walking home. The principal offered him a ride and asked where his car was. Sergio told him that he had sold his car to buy a laptop so the students in his class could learn on the internet. The principal was surprised that he was willing to do all that for his students. Sergio answered casually that it wasn't a big problem. The big problem was that his wife was mad at him and he had to sleep somewhere else that night. In the afternoon at school, a delegation from the education department came for an inspection. When he entered Sergio's class, he was confused when he saw all the students meditating. Sergio explained that the children were learning to calm themselves and control their emotions. The delegation from the education department scolded them for wasting time studying something that was not important instead of studying about lessons that were included in the exam. He then asked Nico basic sixth grade questions, but because Nico couldn't answer it, he called Nico a stupid kid in front of the other students. Nico was offended and left. The delegation then told Sergio to meet him after class. At the principal's office, because his way of teaching was deemed deviant and not following procedures, Sergio was punished with a two-week suspension. Sergio was shocked because he only wanted to arouse the students' interest in learning by making the class more fun, but all the teachers only thought about exams and ignored the students' mental health. If he was suspended, the students would be taught by another teacher. The class would return to being tense and boring class. 
He was afraid that the student's trauma with learning that was starting to heal would return, but whatever Sergio's explanation, the decision had been made and he was suspended for two weeks. After school, Paloma looked for Nico, who ran away. When she found him, she tried to cheer him up. She told him to ignore what the delegation had told to him because, for her, he was not a fool. She often paid attention to him in class and he often answered questions correctly, which meant that he was smart. To cheer him more, Paloma kissed Nico's cheek. Just when Nico started to feel better, his brother and his gang showed up. The gang leader forced Nico to stop going to school and just work with him because he needed a kid to become a drum courier. The gang leader saw Paloma who happened to be there and thought about kidnapping and raping her. Seeing Paloma in danger, even though he was scared, Nico was determined to take the gang leader's gun and shoot him. At the same time, when Sergio was about to leave school, he heard gunshots and Paloma screamed so he rushed to check, only to find corpses lying there. He then tried to calm Paloma who was scared, but when he checked the bodies one by one, he saw Nico was one of them. Weeks had passed since the incident and even though the suspension was over, Sergio still hadn't come to school and there was no news about him. Out of worry, the principal decided to visit Sergio's house. Sergio didn't want to come out and locked himself in his room. The principal, who didn't want to give up, said that he would continue to wait until Sergio wanted to talk to him. When he heard that, Sergio finally came out, while crying. Sergio said that he had failed as a teacher. If he helped Nico instead of letting such a small child solve his problem alone, he would still be alive. Seeing Sergio continue to blame himself, the principal told him that since he came to his school, he was happy to see the children in class become more active in studying. In fact, students from other classes were jealous of Sergio's class. Even though they lost Nico, the other students still needed him, especially Paloma, who had been absent for days. Sergio might be the only one that could bring Paloma back to school. Hearing the news just now, Sergio rushed to Paloma's house. When they arrived at Paloma's house, Sergio tried to persuade her to go back to school, but Paloma couldn't do it. Her father didn't allow her. She thanked him for supporting her and believing that she could achieve her dream, but it turned out that just believing was not enough. For a poor child, she had to be able to accept the bitter reality. Sergio didn't want to force her and decided to leave from there. When Sergio was about to leave, Paloma's father gave him the telescope his daughter had borrowed from school. Looking at the telescope, Sergio told him that Paloma had never borrowed anything. The telescope was made by Paloma herself. He told Paloma's father that he should be grateful to have a beautiful and smart daughter. If she was supported, her future could be very bright. After Sergio left from there because he still couldn't believe it, Paloma's father searched his daughter's room and found a pile of books that Paloma had hidden. Seeing all that, his father felt very sorry. He just realized that all this time he had hindered his own daughter's dreams. Before going home, Sergio and the principal stopped by Nico's house. After Nico and his brother died, the house was empty. In the backyard, Sergio looked at the boat that Nico had just finished repairing and with a smile on his face, Sergio pushed the boat into the ocean. Days passed and the day of the final exam finally arrived. That morning, Sergio was sitting alone in his class, waiting for his students to arrive while reminiscing the last year's moments with his students. Not long after that, one by one the students arrived. Sergio told them to get ready, but when the exam was about to start, Paloma still hadn't come yet. Sergio kept staring at the gate, expecting her to arrive. Fortunately, when the gate was about to close at the very last second, Paloma finally appeared. He was relieved to see her. Before the exam started, Sergio asked his students to gather. While holding back the tears, he thanked them and reminded them of the fun things they had been through together in class. He believed that they would definitely be able to finish this exam well, and whatever the result, he would still be proud of them. After hearing the motivation, each of the students confidently started the final exam. A year before Sergio started teaching, there were only 55% of students passed the math exam and 69% passed the Spanish test. None of them got a high score in 2012, a year after Sergio taught, 93% passed the math exam and 63% of them got a high score. 97.5% of the students also passed the Spanish exam and 72% of them got a high score. 10 of his students reached the national top 0.1% in math. Paloma achieved the highest score. Her story became a national sensation and she received a full-fledged scholarship and later moved to a new house. Sergio still taught the 6th grade in Jose Urbina Lopez School. To this day, the school still hasn't had a computer room.